Hello everybody and welcome to a train simulator video. Today we should be driving a class 150 stroke 2 from Bristol Temple Meads to Cardiff. So first thing we need to do is we need to turn off the uh, pause menu. We need to open the doors by pressing T. We then need to press shift and W to turn the master key. Then we need to put the train into gear with W. Cancel the automatic warning system with Q. Then we'll put the train into neutral gear. Then we'll press uh, I to turn on the instrument lights, press K to turn off the tail lights, press H to turn on the headlights, and J to turn on the marker lights, and then we need to press Y to turn off the driver reminder appliance. Next thing we need to do is we need to press F1, and we need to look at the train's head code, which is 2 uniform uh, 24. So if I just move the camera, and we can set up the uh, GSMR, so if I press the registration button, and we put two uniform 24 well, that's just eight so I'll just uh, cancel that and put U and then 24 and then for, we need the uh, number of the starting signal so if I press the number nine on the keyboard and we zoom in and our signal is B45 uh, but obviously uh, there's no uh, uh, B to use on the uh, GSMR so we'll just have to use an extra number so uh, for this we'll just put 045 in instead and then we will uh, press uh, the tick and that is uh, our train registered to the GSMR this is of course the class 150-2 uh, which is available through Armstrong Powerhouse's website. It was formerly available on Steam and was developed by Thompson Interactive. However, Armstrong Powerhouse uh, last year brought the rights to this train and they've enhanced it by um, uh, redoing the cab, the sounds and the driving physics and uh, touched up at quite a few of the textures and that. So that's available to download from AP's website at uh, £19.99. And the scenario we are playing comes with the uh, pack itself. Just before starting this scenario, I have actually had to alter this as I do not have the Dovetail Games Class 159 nor the Armstrong Powerhouse Cummins uh, enhancement pack for that train. So I've just had to uh, change the Armstrong Powerhouse variants for the Dovetail equivalent. But as, uh, but as a result, this scenario will run smoother because I've got less detailed trains uh, running in the scenario. So the starting signal is at danger, so I'll just put the uh, driver reminder appliance back on. I can also just uh, put the, go to the external view and quickly make sure that our destination blind is set to Cardiff Central, which it is. Uh, the destination blinds on the 150 stroke 2 are changed with F7 and F8. Uh, there is no additional variant with an electronic destination display computer. We are of course also driving in the autumn season so I just need to be careful with how we accelerate and brake as the train could be uh, prone to slipping on the tracks. So departing Bristol Temple Meads, the starting speed uh, limit is 25 miles an hour and we have about 4 miles to go to Filton Abbey Wood. I'll also just quickly press Ctrl D to turn on the uh, vigilance device and this will sound every 60 seconds and we need to respond to it by pressing E.
just before the next signal we have an upcoming increase in our speed to 40 uh, miles an hour Just before the signal, the speed is just going up to 60 miles an hour. However, I'm going to have to start uh, going to slow down now as the next signal could be at danger. So I'm just going to put step one of braking on. And this will ensure that we do have enough uh, time to stop at the signal just in case the wheels uh, slip. Going to release the brakes. And I'm going to start slowing down to a stop now. The signal has just changed to a single amber, so we can now uh, depart again. Just going to cut the train speed now and I'm going to start slowing down for the next signal. The signal is just cleared to a green aspect, so we can now accelerate back up to, nine, uh, to line speed. At the moment the train is uh, climbing up a 1 in 75 gradient and this is obviously affecting the train's ability to uh, accelerate.
just received an AWS warning for a drop to 60 miles an hour. However, this isn't uh, going to really affect us as we are now going to uh, slow down to stop at Filton Abbey Wood anyway. So I've just cut the power off. And I'm just going to use uh, gravity to our advantage to help us slow the train down. And I'm just going to apply step one of braking now. And into step two. Just going to release the brakes. Want to be entering uh, no faster than 30 miles an hour. And step two should bring us in quite nicely. Just come to a stop about here. And press T to open the doors. Just going to put the train into step one now and prepare us for departure. As we departed Filton Abbey Wood, we had a bit of wheel slip there. The speed limit is now 60 miles an hour, and we've just got over a mile to go to Patchway. At this point I'm just going to cut the power off now and I'm going to start to prepare to stop for Patchway. So I'm just going to put the train into a step one brake application. And into step two. I'm just going to release the brakes. And into step one again. The platforms at Patchway are quite short, so I probably want to be entering them no faster than at least 20 miles an hour, in, uh, especially in these conditions. So we're just uh, being nice and steady, taking our time. Just release the brakes there. 
just applied them a bit too hard and again just come into a smooth stop stopping mark 4 patchway is just at the end of the platform here As you can see, the uh, current day Great Western Railway livery is one of the many liveries included with the 150 stroke 2. I think there's something like 20 liveries included with this pack. And again, departing patch where we uh, got quite a bit of wheel slip there. Uh, when when uh, I encounter wheel slip, what I tend to do is just drop the power back down to one notch and then try again. Of course, we can apply sand at any time, uh, should we need it, by using the X key on the keyboard. And the speed limit is now 90 miles an hour. The class 150 stroke 2 has a maximum permissible running speed of 75 miles an hour. However, the uh, timetable on this scenario is quite tight. Um, so if you want to get that green tick on the scenario list, uh, then you'd have to run the train at full pelt. Uh, and especially now on this section at full whack, uh, the train can reach uh, speeds of just over 85 miles an hour. So I'll just demonstrate that to you now. We're now travelling down a gradient of 1 in 90. As you can see, we're now travelling at up to 88 miles an hour. I think in real life the, uh, the train is physically capped at uh, 75. But in, uh, in the world of train simulator, there's uh, no phys uh, physical cap implemented. Some trains like the uh, Class 90 do have a speed set function, and if the train starts to overspeed, then the Class 90s will automatically put the train into a step on brake application to try and maintain the correct speed which has been set.
just see, uh, received advance warning of a drop down in the speed to 75 miles an hour, so just going to start sliding down for that now. Now at uh, one in one hundred, we are now uh, descending down the seven valley. Oh, sorry, the seven uh, seven tunnel. Sorry. And this is the longest tunnel on the uh, South Wales main line. So I'm just keeping a constant eye on the speed now. blue lights in the tunnel indicate a change in gradient to drivers so we now need to get ready to accelerate once we come up to the second set of blue lights. And now I've applied full power now. And we've got three miles to go to the next station stop at uh, Seven Tunnel Junction. As you can see, we are uh, ascending a similar sort of gradient to what we came down the tunnel in, uh, and the train is struggling to accelerate up to line speed. Of course, for a train with a bit more power, such as a uh, Class 43 HST or a Hitachi IEP set, uh, this uh, gradient would uh, prove uh, uh, probably uh, quite easy to those trains. Just going to start cutting the power now. I'm going to start sliding down for Seven Tunnel Junction. We've got a bit of uh, wheel slip again, so just uh, applying sand. And 
that's brought our speed right down. And here we are at Seven Tunnel Junction. So you certainly need to have a, a cool head when you get uh, into a situation like that where you're coming up to a, a station and you get a uh, wheel slide uh, as you're uh, slowing down from uh, quite a high speed. And the DST has just sounded because of, uh, I haven't put the uh, train gear into uh, neutral. But we're nearly ready to depart now. So departing Seven Tunnel Junction, we have uh, we now have uh, nine miles to go to Newport, and again we've just uh, encountered some wheel slip. So I've just dropped back the power to notch six. And I'm just going to try for notch seven again. And the line speed at the moment is 70 miles, uh, sorry, it's just uh, gone back up to 75 miles an hour. You'll probably have just noticed the uh, drop in revs as the train reaches 50 miles an hour. I should mention that the wheel slip and wheel side is randomised so you could uh, you could load this train in a scenario uh, and it could uh, run with practically no slippage at all uh, but in the um, next time you load it up probably in the same scenario it might run with more slippage the amount of slippage does vary depending on its season it's obviously at its worst when it's raining, uh, most particularly, or snowing uh, even, uh, most particularly in the winter. speed limit has just increased to 90 miles an hour and again I'm going to have to keep the train running at full uh, at full whack um, to ensure that we get into Newport on time. I have played this scenario once before and I found that running the train at full whack it'll get you into the station at least a, a minute early but this is all dependent on, wheels, uh, on the uh, rail conditions as well.
as you can see in that first trackside shot we just got photo bombed by a class 15A. Uh, I should also mention another special feature about this pack uh, the class 150-2 comes with a dynamic exhaust feature so when you load the train like the wheel slip and wheel side if you load the train up uh, the first time in the scenario it may run clear as a bell but if you load it up a second time in the same scenario it could be smoking like there's no tomorrow uh, so that's another interesting feature where it just makes the train feel more alive and certainly with these uh, running sounds you do get a real sense of movement as well from the train You can also open the uh, cab windows, which I will just demonstrate to you now. And when you open the cab windows, uh, you can uh, hear the wind rushing past. And it also becomes a little bit harder to hear the uh, instruments in the cab, which is a nice dynamic that I do like. The automatic warning system warning that we've just heard is for this upcoming reduction in the speed to 75 miles an hour. So I'm just going to apply step on the braking now and that will bring us down quite nicely. going to slow the train down to 40 miles an hour and again we do have a bit of wheel slip so I've just uh, applied more sand step 2 should bring us down in time and the brakes are released
just going to start braking down for a further drop in the speed to 30 miles an hour. As we approach a uh, Newport station. And here we are at Newport. So I'll just uh, check the briefing. Just got about a minute or so here. I'll just uh, move the camera around to see what else is in. And we have a cross country turbo star on the adjacent platform. If I press uh, 9 on the keyboard. And if I go to where we are, and that turbo star is uh, forming a train from Cardiff to Nottingham. Just see if there's any more trains on the way in. And here we have, uh, I believe it's a class 175 uh, on a Milford Haven to Piccadilly service. So that's on its way into Newport now. Just going to enter the cab again and I'm going to get the train ready to move. When you put the train into forward gear on the 150 2, the uh, vigilance device will sound automatically, uh, so you will need to immediately cancel that by pressing E. And departing Newport, we now have approximately 11 miles to go to our final stop, which will be Cardiff Central. speed limit has just increased to 50 miles an hour so just going to apply a bit more power and we've just passed for class 175 in the tunnel you can tell by the shape of the headlights
just going to cut the power as we approach the signal just to make sure that we don't overspeed. Just leaving the tunnel there at Newport, the speed does drop uh, a little bit sharply as soon as you exit, so you just need to uh, watch your speed there. And I have been caught out by that on a number of occasions. Speed limit is now raised to 75 miles an hour, and after this uh, halfway in between uh, this uh, current signal and the next, the speed limit will uh, increase back up to 95 miles an hour. On the section uh, between uh, Newport and Cardiff, the signalling headways are quite tight, uh, so that's another thing we need to look. At, we need to keep an eye out for. There is of course a version of the Armstrong Powerhouse uh, 150-2 which you can buy separately on Steam for £11.99 and that comes with Ariba Trains Wales base liveries and the scenarios for the uh, Bristol to Swansea route which I believe are the same as the ones that come with this pack though the AI is obviously different. Another advantage of buying the Armstrong, uh, the, the Steam variant of this train is that you do get workshop compatibility, so um, you can obviously uh, share scenarios that you make with that train. As you can see, we've just passed uh, First Great Western HST with uh, the specially. Uh, Livered um, Sir Kenneth Grange uh, British Rail uh, Blue and Grey set. So again, uh, Sir Kenneth Grange was uh, the uh, designer of the HSTs. The train. Uh, that particular power car was put into um, BR Blue and Grey to celebrate 40 years of the HST. There is, a, uh, there is another power car which has also been given into City Swallow livery. And that was also done to uh, mark 40 years of the HST. Just behind that, we see a class, another Class 150 2 with um, Great Western Railway livery. Just to give you, uh, just to give you a quick update on what's been going on on the uh, train simulator front. I have been working on a review video of the Armstrong Powerhouse and Wagons Class 314 and 315 pack and work is progressing nicely on that. I've recorded all of the narration for it and I've recorded uh, quite a bulk of the footage now and I'm nearing the end of working on that video. So hopefully by the time this has been posted that will be the next train simulator uh, related video to come out. Well, I can't exactly give a um, a concrete date of when it will be out, uh, just 
because of uh, stuff that happens uh, outside of the train simulator. And outside of YouTube. And I've just uh, cut the power up there just before we reached that uh, 75 mile an hour speed limit drop. Just going to apply a bit more power now to try and keep the train up to speed. Once I've published the Class 314 and 315 review, I would like to look into uh, reviewing another route, uh, and that will be between the Isle of Wight or the Wherry Lines, which I recently purchased in the Armstrong Powerhouse uh, Bank Holiday Sale, along with the 150-2. But I'll probably uh, do the Isle of Wight first, I think. But we'll see what happens on that front. And I don't know why I just went into step one braking there. So I'll just apply a bit more power. We have just received advance warning of a drop in the speed to 40 miles an hour. So I'm just going to have to cut the power down now. going to start braking and again step two that should bring us down to 40 and that has just brought us down to 40 right in time so I can another close call there. With this uh, signal giving us a double uh, amber, uh, double yellow aspect, uh, this means that we do have a clear run into platform three at Cardiff. A further AWS warning notifies us of a drop down to 20 miles an hour. So I've put the train into a step one brake application. That should bring us down quite nicely. Got actually going to go into a step two brake application and a further warning uh, warns us of a single yellow aspect. Just going to apply a bit of power here. After this signal we do have another drop down to 15 miles an hour. 
So I'm just going to put the train into a step one brake application. And I'm just going to release the brakes now. Just have to watch the train speed here as the, uh, the gradient is uh, rather sharp. Uh, traveling upwards into Cardiff. And we just uh, got a bit more re uh, wheel slip there, just as I was uh, cutting the power. And with about two minutes to spare, we are now in Cardiff Central, so I'm just going to let the train roll in. Just going to get us over this AWS ramp. And I'm just going to uh, bring us to a stop. And here we are at Cardiff Central. Well, this isn't uh, quite the end yet. We've still got one more bit to do after this, and we need to head up to the up relief at Cardiff West. So I'm just going to deregister our uh, he head code. Um, if I can find, it. in fact, I'll just do this. because I believe the uh, scenario will want us to change our head code. But the dialog box hasn't uh, come up yet. I think it will come up once uh, the station stop has cleared at Cardiff. And we're due to depart in just about a minute's time. So I've just got uh, eyes peeled on the uh, GSMR for when this uh, text box comes up. Just applied the uh, driver reminder appliance because I think the, uh, the starter is still displaying a red aspect. So, a head code for the empty stock movement is 5 Charlie 89. So I'm just going to re-register the train. And the starting signal is... I'm going to find where we are. One five five. So... Oops, if I uh, click out of that. and tick and that's just registered so I'm just going to take off the driver reminder appliance and I'm going to put the train into gear and I'm just going to even though this signal actually it's just cleared to a green aspect I was just going to say I was going to roll up slowly to that signal but it's just cleared so we are clear to proceed into the up relief and once we stop, uh, stop the train there, that's where the uh, scenario will end. To 
parting card if we do have to be wary of another uh, sharp drop in gradient. And although the speed limit has just jumped up to 30 miles an hour, there's no point in speeding up as we are approaching another 50 mile an hour speed restriction. going to put a step on brake application on. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure where our train was there. Going to uh, slow the train down again. The speed limit has just changed to 30 miles an hour, but I'm just coming to a stop anyway, so I'm just going to start slowing the train down now to make sure that we stop within the boundary of the marker. And here we are, journeys end at the Cardiff West Up Relief. So I'll just uh, deregister us, uh, turn the headlights off. Okay, and J. In fact, the, the game's just locked us out, so we'll just send the scenario now. And there we are, we've completed the scenario, and I'm happy to say there's been no uh, penalties picked up. So I've really enjoyed that scenario, and thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have uh, making it. If you'd like to stay up to date with me, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And also, if you liked watching this video, you could, uh, you could also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, when you subscribe, uh, please make sure that you click the notification bell icon, uh, which is next to the subscribe button, as then YouTube will notify you of the latest videos that I upload. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it, and take care.